Welcome to the video number four in the Foundations of the Computational Economics course. In this video we're talking about Python Essentials and we'll, we'll start from the basics, uh, looking at different data types. So the plan for this one is to first talk about some very basic stuff like names and comments in, the, in Python language, then uh, uh, explore different variable types and, and their footprint in the memory, look at binary operations, conditional expressions, and some uh, additional variable types, complex variable types or composite. Uh, in the next video, we will continue with the same uh, uh, theme and look at flow control and conditional expressions. So uh, just to remind you that we're doing Python in this course, uh, the general purpose programming language. And now I'd like to make a distinction that uh, in this video we will be talking about the native Python uh, as uh, distinguished from the scientific stack, what's this called, you know, different Python modules, which we will be using a lot uh, during this course and, and which, which uh, make Python as versatile and useful, such as NumPy, SciPy, Pandas, and Matplotlib. So today we're just talking about core Python. Uh, it's important to highlight this because the variables in the core uh, Python are different because every new model may actually introduce uh, their own data types and their own methods and, and, and so forth. So uh, just to make this clear, uh, because later on we will be looking at more things. So uh, writing nice looking uh, code in Python is quite easy. There is uh, a coding standard or a style standard, which is called uh, PEP8. If you go to this page, you'll see a very long list uh, of different rules. They're all guidelines, but they're fairly common and, and it's, uh, it's not a bad idea to adhere to these to make your code more readable. Uh, in particular, uh, four spaces per, per level of indentation. Indentation plays a very important role in Python, so this, this is important to, 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 to follow. Um, white spaces around binary operations such as plus signs and things like that. Um, comments are very important for any programming, uh, for, any, for any code. Comments should give enough information for somebody else or for you in the future to understand what uh, is being done. Does, they don't have to be, uh, you know, for every line, but they should provide enough information. Uh, there are several naming conventions. It's not that important. You can read it in the document about this, but it's nice to stick to a informative naming convention so that the names of your variables and functions actually convey information about what these functions uh, do and variable uh, contain. Uh, this, the, the rules uh, for naming are uh, not just a few, but they're pretty strict. So uh, the names of variables and functions in Python can contain numbers, letters, uh, upper and lower uh, case, and the underscores. Uh, obviously, you cannot use the uh, reserved words, the words reserved for uh, other functions and elements of the language. Uh, comments are made uh, with hash sign, which can be located any uh, location in the line. So, for example, this is a comment. And imagine we had some code in the next line, I don't know, a equals one, then we can make a comment here um, like that. And if I run the code, uh, then a is actually evaluated, but the comments are around there without uh, making any disturbance. By the way, uh, any good editor would allow you to comment and uncomment a block of lines in the same uh, time in one uh, key press. For on Mac for Jupyter Notebook, this is common forward slash. And then uh, just to mention, I'm also running the cell by pressing shift enter. Okay, so the basic variable types in Python include Boolean, integer, floating point numbers, uh, complex numbers, and strings. Uh, we'll consider each of these types uh, one by one. So Boolean is the uh, simplest uh, type of variable there can be. 
it only holds uh, two, one of two possible values, either true or false. And yet they are important. They uh, enter into logical expressions and we can do some arithmetics on booleans. So imagine here that we say x is going to be false, y is true. Now x or y should evaluate to true if either of these is true, and therefore it's true. Another common logical operator is and, and of course it only evaluates to true when both of the uh, arguments are true. So it's false here. Now um, a result of a comparison can be assigned to a variable, which becomes a Boolean variable. So 1 less than 5 is true, y is going to be true. And now f y uh, true and 4 less than 8, which is also true, should evaluate to true. And that's indeed true. So these types of expressions are, are useful when uh, checking uh, a number of conditions. And for example, here I have written down four different conditions and I want to see whether at least one of them is uh, satisfied. Well, please take some seconds to think about how this can be done. Okay, so the idea is that we can initialize that with false and then check uh, using OR in each of these lines. So as soon as Z becomes true, at least in one condition, then it will carry on through to the end. And so here, uh, I guess condition th this condition 3 is true, so Z should be true. Now how should we do the same thing if we wanted to make sure that all of these conditions are satisfied? Well, we can do the opposite, right? We can do true and change every OR to AND. In which case we, we start with the true and then Z only remains true if both it was there, it was true all the way up to that step and the condition in the step is satisfied as well. Well, obviously here it's going to be false. All right. Uh, next uh, uh, basic variable type is integer. And integer numbers are quite simple, right? So integer variables hold integer numbers. x equals 1 creates an integer, x becomes an integer. Uh, I want to see that uh, by asking the type of x. So this statement will print the type of this variable. Now look at this. y is also an integer, but it's basically given in the binary notation. So 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Right, you can do the same with hex notation. Let's run this code x is 1, uh, x is an integer, class int, oops, y is 11, it's also int, and just uh, out of curiosity, let's run this command here, get size off, that returns the uh, amount of memory that y, uh, that y occupies. We can do the same for, for, for x, of course, to see that x is also taking 28 bytes in memory. That's quite a lot actually. So how large are the integers that we, how large of an integer can we store before we run out of space? So uh, I'm trying to write a large number here in binary. And you can see it has uh, 10, 20, 32, uh, 32 bits. And let's uh, comment this one out first. Okay, y is in decimal notation this large number. Uh, it's an integer and it takes 32 bytes of memory. Hmm, that's a little bit more than what we had before. If we cut it down, it's down to 28. That's interesting, isn't it? So what's the largest that we can do? How about I, I, I have a, a large hex number, 28 bytes of memory. If I add a few uh, of the Fs, then you can see how it goes up to 32 bytes of memory and probably, yes, there it goes to 36 bytes of memory. So uh, what conclusions do, what conclusions do we have to make? Well, Python uh, dynamic, dynamically updates the amount of memory that is needed to store an integer number. So there is no maximum, well, the maximum integer that can be 
is uh, uh, determined really by the amount of memory you have in your computer. That's an interesting fact. Okay, what can we do with integers? A and B is our integers, C is the sum of A plus B. Let's run this piece of code. And here is a special way of outputting the string. There are several ways to format the string actually in Python. And uh, I'm gonna give a link to, the, uh, to, to, to a, a little tutorial in the further resources, further learning resources. But this is one of the ways. Uh, this uh, percentage expressions, they define the format for which uh, the variables that are listed here and note additional brackets. They will be, each of these variables will be placed in this placeholder created by the percentage expression. So what we have here, 155 plus 7 is 162, and this is the, the class, the type of the result. The result is integer when we sum up to integers. Okay. Um, what's next? Let's see if uh, C is A minus 50 B. What type is that? C is still an integer, even though it's a negative integer. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, and here's an example um, where C is A to the power. Remember this double multiplication is a power sign. So C is uh, A to the power of B. And this is a huge number, uh, 155 to the power of 7, but it's still an integer. As we saw, there is no maximum one. But if we divide one integer by another integer, we get into a different type of variable. That type of variable is a float, right? Because we suddenly get a, a fraction that cannot be represented as an integer. And note here that C uh, used to be an integer in this line, in line 3, and automatically beca became a float if needed. Uh, Python does this automatic casting of variables. Uh, and in general, it's a, it's a language with dynamic typing that basically implies that you don't really need to fix the type of a variable when you're coding, unlike many of the low-level languages. Uh, and Python will adapt automatically uh, the types of variables that are needed to store the data that you're, you know, that the expressions are returning uh, to that to that type, or to those variables. All right, um, but uh, uh, here's an additional operation: the double forward slash, and uh, this operation uh, is like division, but it actually uh, keeps the result integer. Uh, uh, whatever you divide. So this is basically the uh, the integer part of the division, and then uh, the uh, the percentage sign is 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 a is a is a uh, the pair to the previous one. That's basically uh, a remainder of the division. So one fifty five divided by seven is twenty two, and one uh, uh, remaining in the remainder. These uh, th these operations are good to know, and uh, in in a, in a couple of we videos we'll we'll have uh, a look at the example of how this can be used. Now, with this automatic change of a type, it's interesting to know that uh, that boolean can be an integer as well. So look at this: uh, x is true, right? Because fifteen is greater than ten. Uh, and then um, let's look at types. X is of type boolean, and it also takes 28 uh, bytes in the memory. And that sounded familiar, didn't it? So Y of type integer takes the same amount of uh, space in the memory. This is not a coincidence. In fact, if you look at uh, what's called the basis, of the boolean type itself, uh, it is actually derived from the integer type. So you can think of boolean in Python as being an integer that can only take two values. And now what are these values? Well, these values we can find. Here we are. Uh, one is less than five, that's true. 
true minus something, which is true, minus 5 is minus 4. Well, indeed, true is basically 1. Uh, so if you, uh, uh, if you, if you um, do arithmetics to the Boolean variables, then true automatically becomes 1, and false automatically becomes 0. This is really handy, because you can do uh, conditional expressions like this. Look at this. Uh, Z is going to take the, the, uh, the value of X if X is greater than 10, or it could take the value of X squared if X is less than 10. And because these conditions are 1 or 0, then multiplying by the condition is essentially the same as doing an if, like a case uh, uh, expression in, in math. And here, of course, 15 is greater than 0, and it becomes and it becomes 15. Now, what happens if x equals to 10? Well, if x is equal to 10, then neither this nor this is true, right? And that means that both of these are false, which is 0, so we expect to see z to be equal to 0. The next step is uh, to talk about the precedence of binary operators. You can see that in expressions like this, we are doing many different operations on the numbers, and it's important to know which are done first and which are done last. Well, here's a, a short uh, version of this table. Uh, full table can be found under the link. The power is the uh, operation which has the highest uh, uh, um, order. Uh, so all the powers are calculated first. Then it's multiply, divide, plus and minus, comparisons, inequalities, and then logical operators at the very bottom of this of this letter. So let's think about what uh, uh, y will be in this example. Knowing the, about this precedence procedure, we know that 5 minus 4 should be evaluated first. Is it right? right? Plus and minus is above the uh, logical operations, which is compar comparison. 5 minus 4 is uh, 1, and 1 has to be compared to true, and true is 1. Uh, remember in the integer uh, in the integer version. So 1 is not greater than 1, so y should be false. And that's indeed so. The next example um, looks like this. 5 divided by 2 to the power of 4 less than 10, or 15. So the first uh, operation that's going to be performed is the power. Uh, okay, so s 5 divided by 16, less than 10, that's true. So true or 15, which is evaluated to true as well. Uh, it doesn't really matter because we have true in the beginning. So this should be true. All right. Now look at this third example. This is already evaluated to false. How come is that... Uh, so, 3 is greater than 2, indeed. True equals to true. That should be true. Shouldn't it? Well, there's another rule here. It's called chain comparison. For, um, to make it sort of closer to the math expressions, this can, uh, Python supports this sorts of expressions for comparing two inequalities in the same time. Imagine you have x here instead of instead of 2. How, that's how you can compare x to uh, both sides of the interval in the same time. Same logic applies here. So it's as if 2 was compared to 3, and in the same time 2 was compared to true, which is of course not true, and therefore we get false in the end. Uh, that's so that's that you can think of this as an as, as in a special case. It's a special case called uh, chain comparison Okay, what's the conclusion conclusion is that the good practice is always to put brackets uh, To avoid ambiguity like for example here if we wanted to think of this uh, As a comparison of three greater than two equals to true then we would get true right away, right? True is true so put, put in brackets around uh, uh, the ex expressions that you want to be dead sure uh, about how are evaluated is a, is a good I idea. All right, the next um, data type is floats, floating point numbers. We've talked about them uh, in video number three and we've seen them already uh, today. 
the floats are given in Python with a dot uh, notation. So if x is 183, that's an integer, 183 dot is understood as dot zero, and that's a float. Uh, you can see it here. Now let me run like this. See the class, the, the type now becomes type of x becomes integer. That's a float. Uh, what's most interesting about floats? Well, remember, they don't cover the, the whole real line. They're not dense. So there is a, also a minimum and a maximum of a float. Um, let's look at this information. So the size of the float in the memory is 24 bytes, which is actually even smaller than an integer. And then uh, from the module sys, we can ask for the float info. And this returns the following information. This is the information about how floats are represented on this particular computer. You can see there is a maximum number. And you can see there is a minimum number, which is re representable as a float. The maximum uh, uh, exponent is, is 2024, so 2 to the 10th. And that's about 308 in the decimal. So this is 10 to the power 308. Uh, and the same with mins. We have some number of digits to represent Mantissa and the exponent. Uh, the base is 2. And this is the most important number here, the epsilon. Now, the epsilon is what's called a machine precision. That's the uh, uh, greatest uh, rounding error that can happen uh, with this representation of floats. So this is the maximum error that this floats may uh, may have. 10 to the minus of 16, approximately. And this is kind of standard for the 64-bit architecture. So every time we need to converge to a certain precision, then, you know, taking any tolerance less than 10 to the minus 16 doesn't make much sense, because that's where floats start losing their uh, their accuracy. Now, there are special values, infs and uh, nan. Uh, inf is infinity. Uh, there is also minus infinity. And nan stands for not a number. And this is how they work. So this uh, is a number larger than the maximum number, number from the last slide. You can see um, that it's basically uh, represented by an inf. The type of the number is float, and it still takes 24 bytes in the memory. What does it tell us in comparison to in integers? Well, uh, Python does not adjust the amount of memory needed uh, to represent a very large number if that number is of type float. This is contrary to the behavior that we've seen with integers. Now, uh, you could take log of zero. And here's uh, uh, something that we'll be talking about a little bit later and later in the course as well. I'm going to import a module, a library called math. And this is going to be called with the name m. So when I say m.log, that means that I'm calling a function a logarithm from that library of math. And see, I'm taking log of zero, which you can't do really. Uh, and this is what we get. We get uh, an error, right? In the math domain error. That's how a uh, mathematical library treats this situation. Now, there's another library, NumPy, which we will talk about uh, in details uh, in a couple of uh, weeks. Um, and they have a different implementation of log. Uh, there, a log of zero would simply uh, um, become minus infinity, and there will be a runtime warning, uh, divide by zero encountered in log. This can be useful, actually, because, you know, you can take an exp of minus infinity and get something sensible. All right. Uh, one more type that we should uh, look at briefly is complex numbers. Uh, Python is perfectly fine to work with complex numbers. They are given in a particular syntax. This j uh, denotes the uh, imaginary unit, uh, the, the square root of minus 1. And um, they are represented in the standard uh, way with real and imaginary part. They are of type complex, and they take 35, 32 bytes in the memory. Okay. Let's check the earliest former formula, uh, you know, the famous mathematical beauty, which combines three uh, most famous constants in math in one formula. Let's look at this code.
So from the uh, module of complex mathematics, I'm importing exponent that can work with complex numbers, the exponent, and the pi. Uh, x is going to be uh, uh, the, the square root of minus 1, the imaginary, the imaginary uh, uh, unit. Uh, and I'm just going to calculate the exp of x times pi and add 1 to that. Uh, what do we get? We have, uh, as an answer, we have this number. And, you know, there's a lot of digits which are different from 0 here, but don't forget, this is scientific notation. So e to the minus 16 means that we are multiplying by 10 to the power of minus 16, which, of course, brings us all the way down to the machine precision on this computer. So essentially, that's 0. And we can confirm that by calculating the absolute value of this number. And as you can see, it has mostly zeros after, after the comma. Uh, and yet, x is uh, from class complex. The footprint in the memory is the same. Okay, so uh, the the complex uh, numbers they work. Let's look at strings. Uh, strings are given uh, with single or double quote. Both single and double quotes can be used interchangeably in Python. Uh, we can as well print, uh, check the type, and. Uh, look at this at this uh, function len length. It returns length of a string. Length of this string is twelve characters, and it takes sixty one bytes in the memory. That's the the biggest footprint, and we will see why. I mean, you can you can think of of why. Uh, now, the most interesting things that you can do with a string is to slice the strings. So let's take a string which which has all of these uh, uh, letters and words in it, Australian National University. Uh, notation S of a square bracket 0 to 9 brings up the characters in the, in the string starting from 0 and up to 9, but not greater than 9. Now 0 is the first character, as I put in, in this, in this uh, uh, second line here to help you. So 0 to 9 is actually uh, these characters. 0, 1, up to 8, but not including 9. Let's see, yeah, Australia is the first case. Now, the same is achieved by skipping 0. So if you just skip the first uh, character, it means that, you know, we take them from the beginning. 11th, you skip the last one, that's, of course, the uh, um, uh, up to the end of the string. So 11th would be here, so I guess it would be National University. National University. The negative index means that we are counting from the back. And counting from the back, we're doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I get University uh, from the back, 10th character, and then all the way to the back, until the end of the string. Yes, University. Finally, the third index can give uh, the step size in this slicing operation. And so uh, from the beginning till the end of the string in steps of three means that we take first letter A, then skip two, then take third letter T, and so forth until the end of the string. Of course, that also works with negative numbers, and you can invert the uh, order of the characters of the string with a simple operation like this. And this reads Australian National University in reverse. Here's a puzzle for you. I would like I'm giving you a, a, a string of uh, random, seemingly random letters. And can you please find a slicing formula such that uh, the word economics appears? Okay, well, I don't actually have an answer, so please figure it out yourself. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is a way to do it. Okay, how much space do strings take in the memory? Here's a little program. Uh, this uh, for uh, um, operator defines a loop. It, we will be looking at loops and other uh, control flow operators in the next video. But here I can say that we're going to be doing something 10 times. And what are we doing? We are taking the string S and we are adding a letter A to the end of this string. That's what the plus, uh, uh, that's what the plus means for strings. 
uh, and then we will just simply say, uh, you know, the, the memory taken by a certain string equals so much. And of course, as before, we're taking the uh, get size of operator to calculate that. And look at that. The string of a single dig uh, character A takes 50 bytes. And then as we start adding characters, the, uh, the, uh, the amount of memory just grows one byte per character. And this is very, very standard. It's a standard situation when one byte uh, is encoded by one, uh, I'm sorry, one character is encoded by one byte. And there is an overhead, right? So the empty string takes 49 bytes uh, already. And that's basically has to do with how Python represents variables, represents strings in particular, and uh, uh, how Python works with these objects, with these variables. Let's see how um, this same uh, idea works with uh, integers. So imagine y is 2, it's an integer, and on every iteration of the loop for 10 times, uh, we are doing this operation. That's basically the same thing as taking y to the second power and storing the result into the same variable. If we run this, we can see that when y is 4, it takes uh, 28 bytes, and then the same size sort of carries on for some time, but then y becomes really a large number, um, uh, right? Uh, it becomes 32 bytes, 36 bytes, and then it takes more and more uh, memory in order to fit this huge number that this grows to. Again, we can see that there is some overhead uh, that has to do with how Python represents the uh, uh, variables in, uh, in the memory. Uh, and um, and then the amount of memory grows to accommodate the uh, n the number uh, that needs to be stored. And for integers, that works this way. For floats, it's a little bit different. If we do the same code for floats, we initialize x with 2.0, then at some point it just stops fitting the memory, stops fitting these boundaries for floats, which are predefined and they don't get expand. And you can see the, the memory... Uh, um, uh, footprint stays the same all the time. Uh, this is kind of large, right? 59 bytes. Well, that's because y was probably, or x was already probably used, so it's uh, it carries on some information from its previous uh, uh, types. If I say, I don't know, z and change... Oh, wait a second, this is get size of uh, z, that was the bug. Uh, size of s. Yes, it should be 24 bytes all the way through. All right, uh, now assignment operator, we just came across it. It's a very nice uh, shorthand notation. So if a is 21, b 10, c 10, uh, I'm writing this to say that b should be taken to the power of c, and then the result is, should be stored in b. Um, same thing here, C should be multiplied by A and the result should be stored in C. And finally, C should be, A should be subtracted from C and again, the result should be stored in C. Uh, B to C, that's uh, 10 to the second, 10 uh, squares is 100. C times A, uh, that's uh, 21, right? Times 2, that's 42. And then uh, C is now 42 and minus A... Uh, brings it back to 21. That's how our assignment operator uh, uh, works here. Let's look at one one other uh, interesting function. It's called an ID. We've talked about memory already today, and uh, Python doesn't have a direct reference to the memory uh, that is used to store different variables, unlike some low-level languages like C, for example. But it has this interesting function called ID, ID uh, returns a unique identifier for the thing that we called X. You can think of this as a memory address. So look at here, uh, look here. So we said that X should be equal to 10 and it's stored at this memory address here. And then we said that Y should be equal to X. And we are asking in line number five for the memory address of Y. Interestingly, it's the same memory address. And then we do an operation on y. So we say y should be uh, incremented by the value of x uh, and look at the memory address again. And here we see that y had been relocated to a different part of the memory. 
Well, what this tells us is uh, about is that uh, Python has a quite sophisticated way of managing memory. And uh, when we say y equals x, but haven't changed y in any case, in, in, in any way yet, then the uh, uh, this variable does not take a new memory, new piece of memory is not allocated uh, all the way until we actually do something with it. That's an interesting feature, which will be uh, important later on. Okay, um, next we should move to the composite variable types. Uh, and th these variables are collections, uh, are lists of, of the basic variable types. Uh, we will not spend too much time on this, but we will work quite a lot with this. And so the first variable here is called a list. It's basically a collection of any other variables put together. Uh, and and the, list, the feature of the list is that it can be indexed and sliced, similar to how strings operate. Tuple is almost the same thing as a list. It is a collection of various variables put together. The difference is that it cannot be edited. It's what's called is immutable. That's kind of a strange uh, uh, thing, right? It's a strange object. Uh, why should you do something unchangeable? Well, you can think of this as a technical thing for Python. This is how uh, collections or sets of different uh, groups of different variables can be passed around to functions and, and back as returns and things like that. It's a little bit technical, but it turns out to be very useful. There are many situations where uh, different variables have to be put together without any intent of changing them. Dictionaries are pairs of keys and values. Sets are unique elements uh, of a collection. Um, has an immutable counterpart as well, like lists and tuples. And ranges are the sequences of integers which are very useful for uh, organizing loops. We will look at that in the next video. So let's look at lists because that's, that's quite common. Uh, I can say that x is a list and uh, we're using square brackets here, uh, which contains on the first element is a boolean variable, then an integer, float, a string, any different variable types can be put together into one list. Interestingly, this trailing comma can uh, can be put there and it's just simply ignored. Uh, it's, it's kind of nice when you have lists organized in different lines. So each line can be exactly the same. Now tuple uh, only differs from a list with this uh, uh, normal brackets that uh, bound it. Let's run this code. X is, uh, you know, as we said, true 5.5.2 in a string. It's a class list, so it's a type list, and it takes so much space in the memory. Exactly same data put into tuple uh, becomes a type tuple, and it takes slightly less, uh, um, uh, a slightly less amount of memory, primarily because there is less things we can do with tuple, so the overhead is smaller. Now let's actually try to do something with this object. Um, we can access elements of the list and the tuple by using square brackets and an index. Index is based zero, so the first element is always in Python indexed with a zero. Uh, and we can say here, so what, what, what am I trying to do here in line number four? I'm trying to make the first element of the list to change its value to an integer equals to, equal to 567, 567. Uh, that's totally fine with the list, but tuple, which is y, cannot be changed, and that throws an error, essentially. Um, typical things that can be done with lists is we can access elements, like so, like we just did. We can slice them exactly in the same way as we slice strings, so exact same rules apply about, uh, you know, taking elements starting from an index and ending at an index. You can have different steps and so forth. Uh, there is length of a list. Uh, and we can, uh, and there are, there's a number of special functions for the list, such as append to add another element of the list, or pop, which is to delete, remove one of the elements of the list by index. There's also remove, which can do the same thing by value. Uh, you can see here that the first element of the list is true. Uh, here's a slice of the list from the first to next to the last. So it's starting with this five. This is zero. True is zero. Five all the way to this complex number here. That's what we see. 
um, the length of this list is seven, seven elements. And then uh, we added another element and then we popped the third element. Now, third index three, which is the fourth element, right? Zero, one, two, three. So string is no more here. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here uh, 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 on, on the, uh, on the uh, uh, complex data types. We'll come across them many times uh, uh, and we'll, we'll see many examples of their use. Uh, some further learning resources for today are a few for a, few, a couple of videos on early formula, which are quite entertaining, uh, but a very good tutorial on the documentation of your code and the background information in the Kevin Shepard's book on Python.